Welcome, my friends, to Shaking the Salt with Dr. Peppers. My bio reads from troubled teen to teacher of the year, 100-pound weight loss, blah, blah, blah. You know the sort of thing you're working on in your before and after life story. So at the end of the message, stay tuned if you want to contact me for any reason, including prayers. Thank you. And I'm Dr. Peppers, Shaking the Salt. Here we go. It's hard for me to believe that my husband and I first met 50-some years ago. We became engaged 50 years ago, and we've been married for 48 years. Wow! Where did the time go? My sister and I often talk about this, and she and her husband have been married over 50 years, and both of us agree that the reason we were able to commit, even though at times the going was tough, is because our parents had such a wonderful love story, and their commitment, even through hard years, was such an example to us that we could do no less. You know, one of the most popular songs of the World War II era included the words, I'll be looking at the moon, but I'll be seeing you. And it seems as though through many of the battles of the 1940s, many young lovers were comforted to know that although they were thousands of miles and a sea apart, they were looking at and dreaming on that same moon up in the sky. Because my dad was in the Navy and was to be shipped out in 1945 to Japan. He and his lovely bride, my mom, were married in a small ceremony in September of that year in Memphis, Tennessee. Now, Daddy has since passed away and gone on to be with the Lord, and my mom will be 95 very soon. But when we look at their romance, we see that they were more in love than most of the people that we ever have seen through our lives. Lifetime. It seems that commitment these days means I do until I want a divorce. I will until you do me wrong. But my parents gave us such an example of true love that they even maintained their passion and were kissing several times a day until the day daddy closed his eyes and went to be with Jesus. It was a forever kind of selfless love that carried into their children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren, and all who saw my mom and dad's true romance were in awe. We have so many pictures of them kissing and hugging, and my dad would wake up in the morning and look at my mom, who didn't have her teeth in and her hair was standing straight out. And even at almost 90 years old then, he would look at her and with big tears in his eyes, he'd say, isn't she beautiful? And he would see in his mind the gorgeous brunette that first walked across that campus in Memphis, Tennessee, where he was stationed back in the Navy days. And he said when he saw her, he knew that she would be the love of his life. You know, when World War II came to an end and my parents settled down in the small town of Clarksville, where all of us grew up, you know, there were times they had to be separated due to circumstances. And mom chose to have her three babies back in Memphis, where her mother lived. And she told us, that at night she would still look out the window and see that moon, knowing that daddy would be doing the same. And through the years, he would be on a business trip or there would be extended family separations for babies or their children's events. And my parents always said that their marriage was as constant as the moon. Although dad had a series of strokes in the 1990s and on into 2000s and had several surgeries surgeries. He always kept his sense of humor, and as a matter of fact, he maintained that humor is one of the keys to a long marriage. And it was when my parents celebrated their 70th wedding anniversary, people would ask him, Mr. Duvall, what advice would you give to young husbands embarking on marriage? And without skipping a beat, he just said that memories would be important, but also it was important to memorize two little words, no matter what. Yes, dear. Yes, dear. Yes, dear. <laughs> and then my brother, who is a confirmed bachelor, always would join in and say, well, dad's parents were married 70 years. Mom and dad were married 70 
70 years. My oldest sister's been married 55 years. My youngest sister, almost 50. So I certainly believe in the institution of marriage. I just never have been institutionalized. Uh, We always had picked out some of the favorites we wanted to have him marry, but so far, he still hasn't. When Dad had an extended stay in the hospital every night as visiting hours were ending, after a good night kiss, he and Mom would both look out the window, and they would search for the moon, and when they could find it, together they would quietly sing, I'll be seeing you in all the old familiar places. It was just a love song of the 1940s, and they'd both become teary-eyed and hug, and Daddy would always say, I thank God for the most beautiful, wonderful wife in the whole world. You know, when my parents and many parents back in the 40s and 50s took that vow of marriage. It indeed was for better or for worse. And my parents lived through many of the worse years as well as the better ones through financial trials, illnesses, loss of loved ones, just the normal trials of life. Sounds a lot like what we're going through today, doesn't it? With all of the scare about the coronavirus and people not knowing what the future is holding, but we still have to make it through just like they did then. But they never stopped putting each other first and sharing that gift that God gives us, unconditional love. Mom and dad have apologized many times for taking time over the kids, so they thought, but we would be watching them when they were dancing or singing or kissing. And we always loved it, even though we would say, ew, Ooh, gross. You know how kids are. Parents, you must be role models for your children. And through the years, watch as your children imitate you, not only in their actions and their habits, but also in their future marriages. Always, besides humor and unconditional love, there was that most important element that cements real, true bonding of marriages together, and that is shared faith. Mom and dad rarely missed a Sunday in church through the years. And every morning and night, they would pray together. And we would see that faith that they had and the ability to talk of the future, even impending death. But it was always with hope and joy that they were actually able to talk about and even look forward to the next life. We children will undoubtedly have beautiful words to say about my mom when she goes to be with the Lord, just as we did with daddy when he went to heaven several years back. One thing I know for sure, mom before the casket was closed. And Daddy, upon his last breath, looked at her and said, I love you. And she said, I love you, and gave him a kiss. And in our minds, we were still hearing that song, I'll be seeing you. Isn't it wonderful to know when we have the assurance of heaven that we will indeed be seeing our loved ones? I pray that you have that assurance, my friend. And if you don't, it is as simple as a prayer away. Just ask God to be the Lord of your life. Admit to him all of the wrong that you have done and ask him for that forgiveness. I know I've had to do that in the past many times, but that one time when I truly knew that I had chosen Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior because I had the example from my mom and dad that that's what they did. If you've never had that example, you can be the one that starts it right now in your family. Father God, I thank you for those that are listening. I thank you for the gift of love, unconditional love as you gave us from the cross when you gave your life. And you said no greater gift is there than for man to lay down his life for his friends. Thank you for the example that we had in our mom and dad. And for those that didn't, Lord, I pray that they would just know that they are loved unconditionally and that they too can be examples in their sphere of influence they have with their family and their friends. And in Jesus' name I pray. God bless you, my friends, and I'll be seeing you. I'm Deborah Peppers, Shaking the Salt. Thanks for staying on, my friend. If you would like to contact me, visit saltandlightministry.com. If you want to share your story with me, ask a question, have me come speak to your group, or maybe just request prayer. Once again, saltandlightministry.com. Thanks and God bless.